starting a debugging session in a background job. Hi, I'm Dave Cole, President of Colesoft and Chief Architect of the ZXDC Debugger. This video will show the basics of setting up a ZXDC debugging session against a program running in the background as a batch job or start a task. But first, let me make a comment. This video is high def. It displays best when viewed in 1080p format and in a full screen mode. If played back in a smaller window, its workstation text displays will appear muddy. For general information about viewing any of the ZXDC training videos, please watch the first video in this series, ZXDC Training Video Viewing Tips. Anyway, let's get started. Here is a JCL library of mine. It contains miscellaneous jobs of all sorts. In particular, it contains the JCL for a couple of jobs I want to use in this video. Let's take a look at demo one. It contains the JCL for running a program I want to debug. The program name is Z20 SIMED. This program is a simple one. It has three DDs an input file, an output file, and a message display file. Pretty basic. Now setting up this job for debugging is easy. Mostly all you need to do is make a couple of changes to the exec card. Here, let me show you. Here are the changes needed for debugging Z20 SIMED. Now the only thing I have to do is change the exec card. Here's what the exec card was before, and here's what it is now. I've changed the job step program name from Z20 SIMED to XTC Call. XTC Call sets up a debugging environment for non-authorized programs. For authorized programs, you would use XTC Call A. Anyway, I've moved the target program's name from the PGM field over to the start of the PARM field, followed by a space, followed by the original PARMs. Eventually, XTC call will strip out the program name from the PARM field so that the target program will see only the PARMs that it expects. Now there are various other DD cards that could be added that are optional under some circumstances and required under others. But I'll save most of that information for a later video. Or you can read about them now in Help DD Names. But suffice it to say that in the current situation, no other JCL change is needed. However, there is one that would be real convenient to have. ZXDC has extensive session profile support wherein each user can customize his own debugging session without affecting anyone else's. So I've added an XTC Prof DD card to point to a profile library. This can be any fixed blocked 80 PDS or PDSE. It can even be the same library as your ISPF profile library, but only so long as your logon procs allocate those libraries with disp equals share. But as noted, this DD card is optional. If you leave it out, ZXTC still has four built-in profiles that you can always choose from. Okay, moving on. Let's submit this job and see what happens. Let me drag in another TSO session window that shows an IOF display of jobs in execution. You can see that our job has gone into execution and ZXDC is now waiting for someone to talk to. There's something I want to show you over in the session log. ZXDC has issued a series of DBC640Q messages to give the system operator, or most likely just you or me, several options. Usually you wouldn't do anything here, but they do offer some useful services. 
so go back and check them out when you get a chance. Anyway, let's get back. I'll close the edit session and return to ISPF primary. Now on our system we use a ZXDC quite a lot around here, so we've put its option D on our ISPF primary menu. OK, this is our ZXDC startup panel. It's got a lot of entry fields, but for now you can ignore most of them. The panel divides down into just two functional areas. ZXDC supports debugging programs either in the background or in TSO. These fields pertain to debugging in TSO, and so in our case they can be completely ignored. This area pertains to debugging programs running in the batch. Generally, you should just leave this yes-no field set to yes, but if you ever wanted to connect to a ZXDC session under a username different from your TSO username, just type a no here and you will get that opportunity. So to tell the panel that you wish to debug something in the batch, just type a 3 on the command line and press enter. You will next see a job selection menu. This shows all the jobs that belong to you and that have pending debugging sessions. But unless you're a severe multitasker, that typically will be only just one job. So type an S to select the job, and there you are. You are now connected to the debugging session in your batch job running in the background. There's a lot going on here, most of which you're probably not real interested in, so I'll save that discussion for a later video. What you probably want most to do right now is check out your program. All right, that's easy. Just type a where command at the top and press enter. And there it is, your program in storage already annotated with its source statements from your assembly. From here, you can do pretty much anything you like. Set breakpoints, step through execution, display data structures, change code and data, whatever. These are all topics that you will find in other videos. One final thought before I go. As you can see, ZXDC takes advantage of and makes full use of large display geometries. All modern workstation software support programs support large display geometries. This even includes IBM's PCOM. This is extensively documented in ZXDC's online help. For detailed information, start ZXDC and issue help full screen terminals. For PCOM terminals, there is an extensive how to in help full screen terminals geometries. This is necessary because custom display dimensions are not directly supported by PCOM dialogues. You actually have to go in and modify the INI files, but it's not really that hard. Take a look at the help and see how it's done. If you have any comments or questions about this video or about anything else having to do with ZXDC, feel free to contact our staff directly. We can be reached at tech support at colsoft.com or by phone at the number shown above. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.